systems of three equations with three variables. The method, like I said, is going to be elimination. And what I am going to decide to do is to eliminate y. The very first thing that you want to do when you're trying to solve a systems of equations in three variables is just decide on one of the variables to eliminate. How do you know which one is the question? Well, the answer is whichever is the easiest one to get rid of. Often, that means a variable that does not have a number in front of it, like you see right here. That top equation has 2x plus y minus 3z equals 1. That y variable does not have a number in front of it. That means it's going to be very easy to manipulate this thing to get rid of it. I could have just as easily gotten rid of z if I had wanted to, because again, I see z doesn't have a number in front of it. But I've chosen to go after the y values. The way we do this, if you don't remember from Algebra 1, is to figure out the least common multiple for those coefficients. So when you're trying to do elimination, you, your job is to figure out what would the least common multiple for that variable be. And that, again, that's why I went after the one that doesn't have a number in front of it, because the least common multiple between a 1 and any other number is whatever the other number was. That makes your life very, very easy. So what you would have done here is, it says to do, you would have distributed what number you needed, and for us that would have been a negative 2 because we're trying to make this y right here match the other one. And you would have distributed that negative 2 across this top equation. Once your y's matched, and that's either with the same symbol, both positive or both negative, or with opposite symbols, one positive, one negative, then you would have added or subtracted appropriately to make sure that that y was then eliminated. That's the, the general process. Once the y's were eliminated, and be aware that there would have been more math going on, but you would have had two equations in two variables, which is an Algebra 1 question, and then we tackle it from there. That is going to be the general setup. It is going to take a lot of space. I'm hoping I gave you a lot of space, right? It is just one question at the top, one question, uh, doing 1.4. So yeah, you have a lot of space, and there's a lot of steps. We're just told to solve the system. And what I have underneath that white box up there in the top right, is the answer. We'll uncover it at the end. This is solve the system. So I'm going to look at this system. And I'm going to ask myself, which variable would be easy to get rid of? And remember, what you're going to do is look for the ones that have a 1 in front of them. The ones that don't have a number in front of them are the easiest ones to eliminate. So for this one, I can either get rid of z, because I see there's a 1 right here. Ha, jokes. That didn't work. Let's try again. Because I see there's a 1 right here. Or I could go after the y's because I see there's a 1 right here. And it actually doesn't matter which one you choose. You just go after whichever one you want to. So what do you guys want me to get rid of, y or z? All right, somebody said z. So let's just go ahead and get rid of the z's first. What you have to do is you have to come up with two different equations. And what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of z for both things. So I'm going to do this in lots of colors. First, I'm going to use the top two equations, and I'm going to get rid of z. Great. I am trying to get rid of z here. What I notice is that the top z has a 1 in front of it, and the bottom z has a 2 in front of it. I need them to match. So the way that would happen is if I were to multiply that top z by 2, right? But you can't just multiply one piece by 2. So if you're going to multiply one piece by 2, you have to multiply all of the pieces by 2. I am going to distribute a 2 across this top equation to all four parts. And when I do, it's going to give me, see if I can squeeze it in over there, 8x plus 4y plus 2z equals 10.
the bottom equation I've done nothing to. Cool. Now my z's match. I'm trying to eliminate them, which means when I add or subtract my two equations, z had better disappear. Remember, you're trying to get a zero. So here's my question. Is 2 plus 2 0 or is 2 minus 2 0? Minus. So because both of those numbers are positive, I'm going to have to subtract straight down. I have to subtract straight down to make this happen. So I'll put a big, annoying, obvious minus sign that I can't ignore, put an equal sign, and subtract straight down. And I will reference this sign every single time. So it says 8x minus 2x, 6x. 4y minus negative 3y. And then, like I said, I reference it every time because it forced me to say minus negative. When you say minus negative, you're adding. So it's not going to be 4y minus 3y. No, no, no. It's 4y minus negative 3y, which is 4y plus 3y gives me 7y. And again, referencing the symbol each time, 10 minus negative 10 means 10 plus 10. Great. I have an equation in two variables. I have successfully eliminated the z. <clears throat> But if you remember back to Algebra 1, the only way you can solve for two unknowns is if you have two equations. So you are going to now do the exact same trick, but you're going to do it with two other equations, and you're going to eliminate z again. You have to make sure that you eliminate the exact same variable. So if I eliminate z the first time, I must eliminate z the next time. It doesn't matter which two you use, as long as you don't use the two equations you started with. But getting rid of z would be easiest if I use the top equation and the last equation. Again, I chose that top equation because it's got a 1 in front of its z. I can make it become anything else really, really quickly and easily. So let's see down here. I've got 4x plus 2y plus z equals 5. And the bottom one is 6x minus y plus 4z equals negative 8. You must eliminate z again. When you do, you will have two equations in two variables, x and y, that match those x's and y's over there, and then we can solve that system of equations. I need the z's to have the same number in front of them. The bottom z has a 4 in front of it. The top one's got a 1. The least common multiple of 4 and 1 is always going to be whatever the other number was, which is 4. So I will distribute a 4 this time across all four objects. Once again, not touching that bottom equation. I now have 16x plus 8y plus 4z equals 20. Haven't done anything to the bottom equation. Now the z's have the same number in front of them. And again, remember, you're trying to get zero z's. You're trying to cancel them, eliminate the z's. They're both positive 4, so you say, is 4 plus 4 zero, or is 4 minus 4 zero? And obviously the answer is minus. Well, here's the dirty little secret. Oh, by the way, big, obvious, annoying, hard to ignore, minus sign, equal sign. Here's the dirty little secret. If the symbols in front of the numbers, or the symbols in front of the numbers, yeah, I said that right, match, you subtract every single time. So if they're both positive, you subtract. If they're both negative, you subtract. If they're different, one's positive and one's negative, add. So same symbol, subtract, different numbers, add. Be really careful, reference your minus sign every single time. 16x minus 6x is 10x. 
8y minus negative 1y. Anytime you have to say minus negative, you plus. So 8y plus 1y. 4z minus 4z is 0. Good. That's what we needed to happen. And 20 minus negative 8 causes me to add 28. You now have a second equation with x and y in it. Now that you have two equations in the same two variables, you do the algebra one thing and you solve that system of equations. So you come down somewhere else, wherever you've got some space, you stack those two equations. 6x plus 7y equals 20. And 10x plus 9y equals 28. And now we get to review how to eliminate variables in Algebra 1. Man, would it be easy if one of these numbers, or one of these letters, x or y, had a 1 in front of it? But neither one of them has a 1 in front of it. That means we are going to have to eliminate a variable, and it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to actually have to find a least common multiple. So we can either figure out the least common multiple of the 10 and the 6 to get rid of the x's, or the least common multiple of the 9 and the 7 to get rid of the y's. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You will get the same answer every time. I'm just going to say the 10 and the 6, because why not? Anybody know the smallest number that 6 and 10 both go into? No, that's the smallest number. It goes into them. I'm talking about what's, so it's going to be bigger than 6 and 10. What's the smallest number that you can divide 6 by and 10 by and not get a decimal? What's the smallest number that 6 and 10 can both go into? They can both go into 60, but it's not the smallest. 30 is the smallest. Now, let's say you couldn't find the smallest. Could you just multiply the 10 and the 6 and say 60? Yes, you could. So you would multiply the bottom by 6 and the top by 10. That's absolutely fine. Because I'm trying to do this at the board without a calculator, I want to go for smaller numbers just to make my life easier. So I'm going to make them both become 30s. The top one becomes a 30 if I multiply everything by a 3. The bot, excuse me, not a 3, a 5. The bottom one becomes a 30 if I multiply everything by 3. <laughs> Arrows everywhere. Switching colors just so I can differentiate it from the thing that's written above it. This is going to give me 30x plus 35y equals 100. And the bottom gives me 30x plus 27y equals 84. Hey, look, my x's match. Yay. And they're both positive. And since they have the same symbol in front of them, am I going to add or subtract? Subtract, because 30 plus 30 is not 0. 30 minus 30 is 0, though. So I do this. Big, obvious, annoying minus sign. Hard to ignore. And I go 30 minus 30, 0. Good. 35y minus 27y, 8y. 100 minus 84, 16. And looky, looky, if you divide by 8, you get that y equals 2. In Algebra 1, when you had a system of two equations, once you found one of your answers, what did you do with it? You guys remember? Somebody said it in the back. What is it? You plug it back in to solve for the other variable, right? Where do you plug it in is the question. I would plug it in over here where these blue equations are because the numbers are smaller. And it doesn't matter which one you choose. You plug y equals 2 into one of them and solve for x. Just pick one. Just to follow a pattern, I always plug it into the top one. So I'll be plugging y equals 2 into 6x plus 7y equals 20. 6x plus 7 times 2 equals 20. 
6x plus 14 equals 20, and to solve for x. Subtract that 14 from both sides. You get that 6x equals 6. And then you divide both sides by 6. And what you get is x equals 1. You've solved for x and you have solved for y. Yay! You know the numeric answer for two of your three variables. Now, using some Algebra 1 logic, now that you know what two of the answers are, how do you think you're going to find the third? You're going to plug them back in. Where? All the way at the top in one of the three original equations. No, it doesn't matter. I always go after the top one just because I like to have a pattern. But it really doesn't matter. X is 1, Y is 2. I'm going to plug both those values into this top equation right here. 4, 2, 1, 5. Okay. Necesito más espacio. Catch up with me, panel. Thank you. 4 times x plus 2 times y plus z equals 5. Plugging in the x and the y that I just found. x was 1, y was 2. Four plus four gives me eight. And subtracting the eight from both sides gets you your z value of negative three. So those three equations I gave you at the very, very top, believe it or not, they are straight lines. But they're not straight lines like you're used to. You're used to x's and y's, right? These are x's, y's, and z's, which means these are straight lines in three dimensions. But it doesn't change the fact that you found the one point in space where all three lines intersect. If you remember back to Algebra 1, when you found the place where two lines crossed, your answer was an x, comma, y. This one, your answer is an x, comma, y, comma, z. It's just where three lines happen across each other. So we found our solution to be x comma y, comma z, 1, 2, negative 3. And just for poos and giggles, I'm going to go to the top. And, oh look, 1, 2, negative 3. So you see how much work I did for this question? Yes, Ms. Rick. Great. Yeah, that's why I only gave you three homework questions. Because you're going to have to do that three times. That's also why I gave you your answers, so you'll know if you're doing them right or not. Just in case you want to see it all in one place. It's a lot of work. That's also why there's only one of them on your test. One. Can you spend 10 minutes doing that one question? No. You had better be faster. You see how many times I could have accidentally messed a symbol up, added wrong, subtracted wrong? Be methodical. Reference your symbols every single time. I'm not joking. When I do these, I literally go 16x minus 6x, 8y minus negative 1y. I might, I might not say it out loud, but I do it in my head and I point at each thing that I'm trying to work with every single time because it's just too easy to mess up a single symbol and be completely wrong. It's just so easy. So easy to be wrong. Nobody said much to me when I was doing that. Is it because it's easy to understand, but holy cow, it's a lot of work? Or are we just so completely lost, you have no idea what you're doing? Just watching? All right, well, if you have any questions, please, you know, throw them my way. I don't get paid to talk. I get paid to teach. But I'll just go ahead and reset it for the next class of victims, I mean students, and we'll move on. And ask you to solve the system again. Nothing is different. It's going to still be the same. I do want to warn you, though, and it's not going to happen in the notes, that it is absolutely possible for the answer to be no solution. That happens. Just like in two-dimensional space, 
it's 100% possible for two lines to never cross because they could end up being parallel, right? Well, parallel lines exist in 3D space also. They just look like this. You know, they still exist. Or it could be that you have, because it's three lines, if two of them are parallel and one crosses the other two, again, you'll never find a single point in space where all three go through. The only way that happens is if all three go through at a very single specific point. If two of the lines are parallel to each other, instantly the answer is no solution. And I will tell you that there's a quick, quick, easy shortcut for seeing if something is no solution. I'll even tell you in your homework, question number three says no solution. But you are not allowed to just look at it and tell me no solution. You have to show the work that proves that it's no solution. How do you prove something is no solution? Because when you do the math, it gives you something that makes no sense at all. It'll say something like 1 equals 0. And the moment that happens, you go, well, that's not true. No solution. How do you recognize no solutions? You recognize no solutions because one of the equations will be a perfect multiple of another one. Except for the answer. That's how you would see it. For example, um, don't, don't write this. For example, if my last equation, let's just say my last equation had been Let's say the last equation wasn't what I just showed you, but instead was this. That doesn't look good. I would look at this and I would say no solutions instantly. The reason why is because I recognize that all I did was multiply the top one by two but not the answers. See, I didn't just multiply by two. Because if you had made any one of the three variables match and added or subtracted straight down, you would have gotten zero equals a number that is not zero. And instantly, you go no solutions. That's how you would have seen that. That's just a trick. Because if the test is multiple choice, it would be great if you could instantly see if something is no solutions. But if the question is a fill in the blank question, well, obviously, you know, it's not going to be no solutions because you can't type no solutions. But if it's a fill in the blank question, I could just say, like, what is the value of z for the answer? So you'd still have to go through the whole process, solve for x, y, and z, and then you just type in the number that z is, something like that. So if getting a false statement, like 0 equals 1, if getting a false statement gives you no solutions, is it possible to also have infinite solutions? Yes. And the way that happens is when you get a true math statement, like 1 equals 1. So if ever you get a false math statement with some numbers, no solutions. And if ever you get a true math statement with some numbers, infinite solutions. Otherwise, it has to have number answers. Let's, let's eliminate some crap. Which variable would be the easiest to get rid of here? Z. How'd you know that? Good. So we're going to eliminate Z because there's a 1 in front of it. Could I have done other ones? Absolutely could. But targeting the one that has a 1 in front of it is the easiest and least amount of work. And since this thing is already a mountain of work, we're trying to do less. So I'm going to take the first and the second equation. So I have 2x, you know what, let me get closer, 2x minus 2y plus z equals 11, and 4x plus 3y minus 4z equals negative 22. I'm trying to make the z's match. I don't care about the symbol, don't worry about that too much. I just want them to have the same number. The z on the bottom has a 4 in front of it, so I'm going to multiply this top one by 4. I will distribute a 4. That will give me 
8x minus 8y plus 4z equals 44. The bottom one has been untouched. 4x plus 3y minus 4z equals negative 22. The z's now have the same number in front of another. The symbols don't match. One's a positive 4 and one's a negative 4. So what's going to give me 0, addition or subtraction? Addition, because 4 and negative 4, instead of and, you could think plus. 4 and negative 4 gets you that 0 that you were looking for. So you are going to add straight down. Let's see what you get. 8x plus 4x, 12x. Negative 8y plus 3y, negative 5y. Yes, 4 and negative 4y or z gets me 0. Fantastic. 4 and negative 22 just gets me 22. Of course, you will be using a calculator on the test, so make sure that you're double-checking your additions and subtractions of negatives. I would hate for you to spend five minutes on a question just to realize you added wrong at the very, very beginning because there is no fast way to fix it. All you can do is start all over again. I need to eliminate z again with two different equations. Uh, since I used 1 and 2 last time, I can either use 1 and 3 or 2 and 3. But clearly, 1 and 3 would be easier because the z has a 1 in front of it in that top equation. So we'll just do like that. 2x minus 2y plus z equals 11. And the bottom equation, 3x plus 4y plus 3z equals 10. Again, trying to make those z's match. Well, the one on top has a 1, and the one on bottom has a 3. The smallest number that 1 and 3 can both become is 3. So I would distribute a 3 across that top equation, and again, I won't change the bottom equation. Bottom equation, so many moving parts. Cool. Now both of those three z's are positive. So would adding them or subtracting them get me zero? Subtracting. Yes, sir. The reason why I multiply the top equation by three is because I needed these two things to have the same number in front of them. That way I could eliminate the z. So the only way you can eliminate a variable is if they have the same number in front of them. Well, right now, if I were to add or subtract straight down before I multiply by the 3, I'm not going to get a 0 in front of any of my variables. So when you're eliminating, you're trying to literally make that variable disappear. So you need adding or subtracting to give you a zero. Yeah, because then once because once that z is gone, I'll have another equation that only has x's and y's in it. And we've already said to subtract, so I'll put a big minus sign right there, and I will reference it every single time. You have to be careful with the minus signs. Reference it every time. 6x minus 3x is 3x. Negative 6y minus 4y, negative 4y. Double checking, 3z minus 3z, yes, that is zero. Yeah? Hold on, is there a, would it, oh, I wrote four, but I said 10, didn't I? Sorry. There we go. And 33 minus 10, 23. There. We now have two equations in two variables. We could do some algebra one with that. Stack them and go through the elimination process again. Now, in this question and the first question, you saw me eliminate z first. Do you have to always eliminate z first? No. You can eliminate whichever one you want first. It does not matter. It just so happened that in the first question and the second question, z had a one in front of it. So it was easy to get. Yes, sir? So if you don't have, like, all, say, all three variables, none of them has a 1 in front of it, then typically, yeah, I go for the smallest one because it 
is easier to make small numbers become big numbers than it is. So if I give you two big numbers, you're going to struggle to figure out what makes them match. So if there's a one, I mean, if there's a two somewhere, you go, okay, well, I know two goes into every even number, so I can make it become any even number I want. So yeah, typically you go after the, the smallest one, but I will tell you, on the homework, I made sure that there was always one with a one in front of it. There's no reason to beat you up. And on the test, I'll go ahead and tell you there at least one of them has a one in front of it. Because I, I just, I don't have a reason to beat my students up. So go like, like, if you can show me you can do this stuff, I'm thrilled. Because it's a lot of work. But yeah, if there wasn't a one in front of one, the smallest variable would be your best bet. Yes, sir? Yes. Well, we haven't finished yet, but solving the system means if you were to graph all three of these lines in three-dimensional space, because that's what they are, they are 3D lines, where is the one point in space where all three lines cross? So if you can find an X, Y, Z, you have found out that all three of those lines go through one point in space, the exact same point. That's what you're hunting for. So what we have done here is we used elimination to get rid of one of the variables because that gets us down to two equations with two variables. And when you have two equations with two variables, you can use elimination again to get one equation with one variable, which you can easily solve for. So if I had given you four equations of four variables, you have to go through the elimination process three different times instead of twice like we're doing for this one. Now we stack our two equations in two variables, 12x minus 5y equals 22, and 3x minus 10y equals 23. Now neither one of them has a one in front of it. So you are gonna be trying to make them match. Again, it doesn't matter which one you do. You could choose to make the x's match and eliminate x, or you could choose to make the y's match and eliminate y. It doesn't matter. Which one would you like to go after? I don't really care. Okay, Lewis said X. All right, fine. Let's make the X's match. I see that the top X has a 12 and the bottom X has a 3. What number can they both become? They can both become a 12. The top one's already a 12. That means I don't have to multiply it by anything. And in order to make the bottom one a 12, I have to multiply everything by 4. So top equation has been unaltered. 12x minus 5y equals 22. But the bottom equation has been multiplied by 4, so we get 12x minus 40y equals 192, excuse me, 92. Yay, the x's match. I need to eliminate them now. Would addition or subtraction get rid of those x's? Subtraction because they're both positive. So you use this. If they have the same symbol, you subtract. Same subtract like that. So subtract straight down. Big, obvious, annoying. Plug that bad boy in. Or see what you got. So 12x minus 12x. Nothing. Zero. Good. Be careful here. Negative 5y minus negative 40y. But the minus negative actually means plus. So that's negative 5 plus 40. That's 35. 35y. Now 22 minus 92 is negative 70. And then divide. You get that y equals negative 2. We have one solution. In Algebra 1, you would have taken that one solution, and you would have gone back to where you had two equations, which for us is this, and you would have plugged that y into one of the two. It doesn't matter which one you choose. And that is how you're going to solve for x. Uh, out of habit, I just use the top one. But it really doesn't matter. I just use the top one out of habit. It's just what I like to do. 12 x minus 5 times that y we just found, and that y we just found was negative 2. I don't like what I'm about to get here. Did I make a mistake somewhere? 
I'm sorry? You got one where? Oh, no, okay, I'm right, yep. I was trying to jump ahead and do math in my head. Negative five times negative two is positive 10. I was seeing it as negative 10 in my head. That's why I was thought that I messed up. Great. So now we get to subtract that 10 from both sides. Give me 12x equals 12. So dividing both sides by 12 gets us x equals 1. And I wish we were finished, but there is one more step, and that is taking the two values that we found, going back to the top, choosing one of the three originals, it doesn't matter, just pick one, plugging in x equals 1, plugging in y equals negative 2, and solving for z. And remember, if at any time you get a false statement, no solutions. If at any time you get a true statement, infinite solutions. Let's see what happens when we plug in x equals 1 and y equals negative 2. Again, out of habit, I just go after the top. 2, negative 2, 1, 11. 2, negative 2, 1, 11. Two, negative two, one, eleven. There. The x value we found was one. The y value we found was negative two. That gives me two plus four plus z equals eleven. So six plus z equals eleven. And subtracting six from both sides gets me z equals 5. We found three numbers. That means these three lines do intersect each other in exactly one place in space. And the place where they meet will be at the coordinates of 1, comma, negative 2, comma, 5. And again, just for funsies, see if we did it right. Oh, yeah, what do you know? Yes, it is a lot of work. But it's just like running a really far distance. At the end, you should feel fantastic because you did it.